What's up, No Load Time? Joel here. Let's talk about the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. This is going to be a spoilers review. However, in the first two, three minutes here, I'm going to do my non-spoilers. And then I'm going to go ahead and give the thumbs up. And when you start seeing that go on, that's when I'm going to make it clear, hey, we're going to jump into spoilers. So uh, make sure to, at that moment, stop the video if you have not yet seen Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Uh, if you have seen it, great, stick around. If you haven't, stop the video. When you do see the movie, you can come back and watch the rest of this for sure. But well, let's talk non-spoilers for those who have not seen the movie but still want to know impressions. So Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, I think, fits in very nicely as a culmination to these trilogy of films. Um, so I, I think right now, as I just digest it, I'm just processing it, I mean, I got out of the theater just maybe two hours ago um you know not even uh not even two hours ago um since i you know fully have watched this movie and, and I just digesting it um but as i process it more and more uh i just think about just the way it really did wrap up multiple storylines multiple characters you know the thing about the guardians of the galaxy is there's so many characters that people love right people love Nebula and they love Gamora and they love Rocket and they love Groot and they love Star Lord they love Drax and you know and some people more one character more than the other they love Mantis right they love these characters and um these the fandom that that that's supporting these movies you know it's nice to, when they get some of that fanfare that payoff for 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 loving these characters and supporting them for so long so um as you see this movie you'll end up realizing what I'm talking about as I say that there's a great culmination for multiple storylines. You know, we, we see different um, different paths, different ways, different maturing for each character. And um, you get to know different sides of these characters that you maybe you haven't seen in the other Guardians movies um, and, and, and the other, you know, times you've seen them on screen. So I think that's really uh, one of the strongest points of the film is really just the character development. I think that that's probably... One of the best things that have come out of this film, um, and and on top of that, I think the film delivers some really great action moments. There's one moment that's one of the the best action moments I think in the Marvel Cinematic Universe as of recent. Uh, when you you'll know when you see it. It's a really really incredible sequence that felt Avengers esque is what I will, will refer to it as. Um, and it, so so those kind of scenes on the big screen really was really a nice payoff. Um, and then just you know overall, I think that this film fits in nicely. I think that the first Guardians is still at the moment, as I digest it, I still think that's my favorite of the Guardians movies. Um, but this is just right behind it. I think this is this is uh, very, very close to it and, and really, really just well done. All right. Thumbs up. If you have not seen the movie, stop because I want to talk spoilers. You've been warned. Spoilers. Let's go. Okay. So this movie is very much a rocket movie. Um, Rocket is the lead character of this film, and we kind of got a, a feeling about that from the trailers going into it, but, you know, when you actually get to fully live through, um, all the pain, all the suffering that he had been through as a character, you understand why he is the way he is, and why he really has closed himself off, but also why he cares so much about the Guardians, because that really is his only family. Wow, what a sad, sad, sad storyline. Um, I think they delivered it very well, but it's very hard to watch. You know, I would definitely warn people, if you've watched the movie and you're talking to other people about watching the movie, I would definitely warn them, hey, you might want to be very uh, careful if you're really sensitive and maybe have gone through any type of uh, trauma that, that this, this, this could cause because there's a lot of people that have been through some hard things and watching something like this can really impact them deeply in their feelings because because of how well portrayed when things are you know out of touch it's hard to relate it's hard to gotch but the way they did this they take a character that <laughs> um we're not raccoons right watching this movie yet somehow we're able to relate to a raccoon um and, and it's just i think just the narrative and the way that it was done was really really cool um and i mean just just sad overall but but really well done and um, and then, you know, I love the way that uh, the handling of uh, Gamora and um, Star-Lord, you know, we know that where things left off in the last movie, that they, you know, 
it's it's another version of Gamora. Gamora, her sacrifice herself is not here. This is a different version of her, and she doesn't really know, you know, or have the relationship that the other, you know, Peter is used to having with Gamora. And, you know, he so deeply cares about Gamora because we see from several movies, you know, including what he did with Thanos, right, where he literally, when Thanos started talking about Gamora, that's when he... Um, started losing his mind and you know messing things up in Avengers Infinity War we know that that he deeply cares about Gamora why because there's a similar thing that we see with Rocket that's his only family that's his friends those are the people that are closest to him and he just wants to have them all together and and with this movie you know you see his care for Gamora you also see how Mantis brings up to him about you know his grandfather his family on earth and you know has he even checked on them and it's like stuff like that that's just small details that is consistent instead of just making it you just care about this adventure and try and make it action and you know comedy and all these different things it's these kind of little details that make you look at the characters in a very human light and say okay i get it they've they're they've um they've been through some stuff and they're not just going to just jump forward because humanity doesn't just do that right we process things so you know you see you, you see that with 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 Star Lord here, and um, I think that I had seen someone else say this, so I don't want to take credit for it. But I saw someone say this online. I can't remember exactly who, but like Nebula is more like Gamora, and Gamora is more like Nebula from the past movies. Kind of switch in characteristics, and it's really funny. Um, man, uh, the 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 things that really work well with this movie work really well. There's not too much that doesn't work well. It doesn't make sense. That doesn't mean the movie's perfect. Um, there's definitely some stuff that I want to talk about that that I thought was, uh, you know, not not up to par. I think some of the things that I, I didn't care for was, you know, there was some forced humor moments to me. Um, you know, there's some moment like, you know, there's, there's a whole moment where Star-Lord and Mantis are talking and it's, you know, Star-Lord and Drax are talking and Mantis tells Drax to tell Star-Lord about the whole, like, the pond and the, you know, then jumping on the leaves. And, it, like, to me, that whole moment was not super funny to me. Uh, it was just kind of bizarre. And, and then they just, like, it just stops. They just go on to the next thing. Narratively, they try and factor that into the final conversation of what star lord's decision is of how he's going to go back to earth but i just thought the way it was done was just kind of like a sure i'm trying to make something funny out of it that just was strange um and then like some of the stuff like for example like the 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 whole thing with like the kids right the kids that are on the ship with um the, you know the high evolutionary not very well explained. We get the idea he's picking up, you know, different life forms and carrying them on his, his ship for experimentation. Um, but, you know, we know that they speak a different language and Drax just refers to them as like a little morons. And I'm like, ah, it's supposed to be funny. Wasn't very funny. Um, well, him speaking the language to them back, like back to, them, I thought that was pretty funny. I was like, oh, look, everyone thinks Drax is dumb, but like, you know, he actually, you know, they able to communicate with the kids. Like, that's the stuff that like, I like. But there's like little, little stuff like that, moments like that, that's just kind of like, why are we doing this? And, and that's where it almost feels like it's kind of forced to be just goofy. Um, and and it's it's little, little details like that. Nothing too crazy. Just stuff that when you're sitting there watching, you're like, huh. And most of my audience was quiet about it. But then there's other moments that are like really funny. Like there are really, really funny com comedic moments that happen in this that I, I really laughed at that was that was pretty pretty good and, and you need that lightheartedness with a heavy narrative that that's being carried in this film as for the future of the guardians let's talk about where things are going right so adam warlock's character i think will for sure be back um i think for sure you're gonna have um rocket and groot you know in, in future projects coming in and I think for sure, like, which the confirmation for the post credit scene, the last one, you know, Star-Lord will return. Those are the characters that feel confident, right? They'll all be back. What they'll do with Adam Warlock, I'm assuming they're going to show him progressing and, and as a life form and, you know, processing the loss of his mother and becoming more uh, wiser, maybe and learning from the Guardians that he's with, you know, that that can definitely work out pretty, pretty well over time. You know, and technically he is a guardian, so like they are kind of building out like 
the original team ish to some extent from the comics at least so i think that's that's cool and i like that um but for the future of the mcu like this kind of movie doesn't talk too much about things that are in the avengers type world and that's another thing that i would list as a positive like most of the other movies everything is tie-in and connection and that worked really well for marvel there's many times where that tie-in and connection is what makes it so cool and force people not almost say force people but encourages people to make sure you have to watch all the movies because it just feels like a long-running tv show you've got to watch each episode that leads into the big finales which is like usually your avengers movies um but the event the, the guardians movies are very self-contained like from the, the first guardians movie yes you have an infinity stone and the second one you know you have the whole thing with ego and stuff but but i think in general like you watch this you could just watch the other two avengers movies sorry the, sorry the fur the other two guardians movies and you would have been just fine like you would have you you can follow it and i think that's a strong point like narratively um you just need to know who these characters are what have happened to them beforehand and you're good um, and that, that, that's awesome. Like this movie is not trying to worry about what's going to happen with the Avengers. It's not trying to ha worry about other, other characters. There may be implications that I'm not thinking about at the moment. I mean, technically the high evolutionary is not dead. Um, that's, that's huge, right? Is that, is he an Avengers level villain? No, but I'm just saying like, there's all things that are set up for possibilities, but it's all hypotheticals. I think James Gunn kind of said, let me hand off the baton, give these characters a really nice send off which is true they they all did get good send-offs and there's always the possibility for them to come back um but there's no need for them at the moment to to force any kind of story or or feel like you're missing out or something hasn't um been fully developed they closed up all these different uh storylines and set them up for new new adventures and that's really cool it's a great way to do it i, I actually really appreciate that because there was a moment I was concerned. So oh, maybe Star-Lord's going to die. Maybe Groot's going to die early in the movie. I thought Drax was dead when they were, you know, in that prison break scene. Stuff like that. Um, that, that almost got me. and was good for, for, for bringing you, you know, in that, that climax of like, oh my goodness, you know, you're really, really following what's going on and, and really invested um, playing with our emotions. It was just what the movie does as a whole. But it's good because it, it keeps your attention, keeps you into it. The movie's... You know, look, it's it's James Gunn. It's there's it's bizarre. There's a lot of really strange stuff that happens in it. It's space. It's aliens. It really embraces the oddness, um, but it's also very artistic. And there's a lot of really uh, incredible takes and creative stuff that's done in the film. So, you know, when you watch this movie, I think just as a I'm not gonna call myself a creative necessarily, but someone who who uh, you know respects creative stuff you know I, I i can definitely see um the artistic take on this and, and i really respect that because it's very different and that's okay that's great um yeah lots of different cameos from past movies you know the characters that that had come back um the guy who's like selling the, the stuff in the store on the nova with the novas you know from the first movie he's playing like you know checkers or whatever on on you know with with, with uh you know different characters like you know michael rooker you know shows back up again for one little scene um you know the song at the end you know that that, that that's played at the end of the movie is a callback obviously to the first guardians like cool stuff like that um that that just you know made you feel like you've you've spent a real adventure with these these characters over time that's my immediate uh review so yeah i think you know go ahead and check this one out if you're really interested in it for me, I'm probably going to give it, uh, I'll probably give it a seven and a half and eight. I think it's probably more of an eight out of 10. Um, it's a really fun movie. I think many people are going to enjoy it and really, really appreciate it. So if you go ahead and check it out, let me know. Drop a comment down below if you have uh, some really strong feelings about anything with the movie. We'd love to hear uh, your reaction to it. Drop a comment down below and uh, follow us and subscribe to the channel. We've got more great content coming. Look forward to talking with you all more soon on the next episode of No Load Time.